Well, hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Today is April 3rd, 2019, and you're here at our Team Prosperity Wednesday meeting. Really, really excited about today. Um, David's got some great stuff that he's going to share with us. Mike put together a great PowerPoint. Um, so um, I did see somebody can't hear. Um, you might want to come back in, Sherry. Um, hoping that other people can hear me. If somebody can go ahead and type into the chat that they can hear, that'd be great. All right, audio's on. Terrific. Um, thanks again for being here. What I want to do today is I want to share some announcements that I've put together um, on my presentation. Let me go ahead and pull it up. All right. Um, so what an exciting time, April 3rd. Things are really, really moving this month and, and the beginning of this year. I hope things are really happening for you and your team as well. If they're not, there's plenty of time, you know, no time like the present and today to really blow it up. Um, a few things that I wanted to talk about today. Um, April is Financial Literacy Month. Um, take advantage of that. There's a ton of really cool advertising that's available everywhere. Um, so definitely, you know, push out some information. Financial literacy is a big part of what we do. We educate people about the business. We educate them about the products. Um, so you should really feel good about what we're doing. And Financial Literacy Month really kind of gives us a chance to shine. Another huge announcement, and I'm going to spend some time on this today, um, our access pass now includes Legacy Shield. This is a huge, huge value. People pay $99 a month for the service, and we all get it. Um, if you're paying for your access pass, that includes errors and emissions insurance. Um, you now have access to a free Legacy Shield plan. So um, you can receive a basic estate plan, a lifetime digital vault to store and e-deliver that plan, and other great benefits from Legacy Shield at no additional cost to you. So a lot of the announcements that you've gotten have talked about this. If you haven't received these things, let me know. I can forward you the emails. But it's a very, very exciting announcement that, you know, that Legacy Shield uh, is provided to all licensed WFG agents with estate planning solutions and a dashboard for your digital existence. Avail available as part of your access pass, you can now receive a basic estate plan, a lifetime digital vault to share and you can learn about plans and all of the other great benefits from Legacy Shield at no additional cost. Um, and, you know, it's a big thing that we're doing. We're helping families every day. Um, and now we're able to help our own family. Um, this is also a great product to learn about. You know, if you have it um, and you spread the word, other people are going to want it as well. Um, so it's really aligned with WFG's mission to protect families, and it really does start with our own family and getting the right stuff in place for us. Um, this email really went through, like, you know, where to actually call for questions. There's a dedicated phone number. Support at LegacyShield.com is available. Um, but anyways, with the State Plan Analyzer, it analyzes your current situation and premium planning to determine if you need to restate, revoke, or create new documents. The process automatically flags potential issues, preventing mistakes ensures that your plan is reviewed by an attorney, gets the right information to the right people at the right time with secure e-delivery of the plan and the time of, at the time of the event. So um, there's a short one-minute, 46-second video. If you go to LegacyShield.com forward slash EN, like entertainment, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so here's some more information about it. You create a personal story to pass on. It securely shares critical information. You're really giving a, le a gift of a legacy. Um, so a little bit more information about this. Mike Kinsberg did a great job covering it on the last company meeting, and I actually took some of the slides from him. Um, all of these are available on your last email that you got from Michael Hinsberg. If you want me to send it to you, let me know. Um, but to get started, you just go to their website. Um, you click on the Advisor tab, and our enterprise code is Builder1000. Um, me and Mike are planning to get this done. It's on my to-do list to get done in the next week or two. And as I'm doing mine, I'm going to take some screenshots so I can do an even better training with everybody on this. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like. I believe this is uh, kind of an old slide, but it, 
really gives you an understanding of the Volt administration wishes and stories. So this is what that kind of looks like. Um, it lets you create a personal dashboard, your life stories, life administration, um, your Volt, a to-do list. It's really, really cool. Um, the other thing um, that I wanted to talk about is WFG recently instituted practices regarding background checks. Um, I wanted you all to see these numbers that a lot of these people are going through very quickly, same day, one day, two days. Um, and there's going to be a few cases um, that could take a little bit longer. Um, a lot of it depends on, like, the county. For example, if they're in uh, Maricopa County, Arizona, it could take 30 days. Um, I mean, we don't have anybody right now yet in Puerto Rico, but those records could take three to four months. Um, but it looks like the majority of people are going to be getting approved in less than two weeks, um, and I'm keeping an eye on that. Um, if it goes for much longer than a week, I send an email and try to get, you know, assistance in pushing it through. Um, I think right now we only have one person pending that hasn't been approved yet, and I've already emailed. So um, it's all good stuff because what happens is, we are vouching to the other 200 carriers that we have that this person or that we've checked their background. So that's, that's why it's necessary. Um, so all good stuff. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is just a few things uh, for your convenience. We do have a WFG support help number. If you have a question about, um, like, just random stuff, like uh, how much does this policy pay? or, you know, things like that that have to do with sales or help and support, anybody can call this number. You don't have to be an SMB or higher. Also, anybody can submit a support case at any time at MyWFG. You just go to the bottom, click on help, click on help and support, and all you have to do is just pick any category and any question and go to the bottom and you'll see this red thing that says still need help, submit a support case, and that'll give you the scroll down of all the different parts of support, subparts, and then you can type in whatever question you have. They're going to immediately open up a support case with a case number in your email, and then they'll email you the resolution. So anybody can do this at any time. There's no maximum amount of cases that you can have open. Um, so if you have, like, uh, you need a breakdown of something, you have, like, a tech question, anything like that, this is a great place to get those answers. Usually you get a, a response back within, you know, same day or up to three business days if it's a more complicated one. Um, so those are some of the things that I wanted to discuss. I'm really, really excited to bring up David Chase. I know he's got some great stuff that he wants to share about what's going on with him. And then after that, we're going to bring up Mike. So um, I had to mute everybody out because of this, you know, we're having a lot of feedback. So let me get back to... All right, David, you should be able to start six now. If you'd like to share, we definitely want to hear what's going on with you. I'm here. Good morning, everybody. I can hear you. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to those who are in the east and central, or central still morning. A um, couple thoughts that I've been going, still going through this process of becoming this not only digital builder, but also a digital person who can write business anywhere at any time. Um, I'm going to share some things with you that are really different than I'm learning. It's very, really painful for me because, you know, change is pain. i got to tell you, and it is painful. I'm doing this whole dissertation, and I'm writing out my thoughts, and I'm writing out everything, and I'm beginning to learn how to talk to people and how to find their pain out, whether it's a prospective client or a prospective business partner. I.E. example this morning, I had a conversation with a gentleman who is a regional vice president of a company called National Life. They call themselves a digital disruptor, but they have brick and mortar. And this gentleman travels all over the place. He's got 1,000 agents, 24 agencies all over the country, and he goes to every one of them. So, you know, I use my age a lot because, you know, who believes that a 60, almost 65-year-old man could be a digital warrior, but you can. And we had this great conversation. He's got 1,000 people. Uh, it all led to, it really led to a third conversation, which is now going to happen on Friday 
with Mike Hinsbark, me, and this gentleman. This happens. This is an exponential moment in my life that I will tell you that it's taken me a while to get, get to these certain people, and it took me a while to be able to talk to the right people be able to, and how to talk to them. Understand something, what I'm learning on the other end, that I have concerns not only for me, but for everybody on this call. If we don't change what we're doing and change the actions from where we were before, we're not going to grow, we're not going to move forward, and we're not going to take the time because we're humans. We're creatures of habits. We all fall back to what's comfortable for us. We just do. I do the same thing. I catch myself because guess what? Without growth, without discomfort, you cannot grow. It just doesn't happen. I'm in the middle of trying to do a 20-minute video of myself. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, i got to tell you, the blueprint's there. I've rewritten, written, and rewritten, and now I'm going to be – I have, and now I've learned how to video myself. Boy, there's the thing I wanted to do in the 12 weeks, and I finally learned after the 12 weeks. But I'm learning. I'm always learning, always opening my mind, always trying to be better and different, and know that change is going to take me where I need to go, but I also know change is pain. You know, and again, I still revert back to what I am comfortable with. But listen, you know, I mean, I... I I did health insurance for so long that I, I would never go back to do that full time. I do it occasionally because I brought that platform to help people on this platform to make some money while we're building this business. And those who aren't using it, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I thought it was a great venue for you to be able to convert people to life insurance. But, you know, it's, again, it's the same people who pick up the phone and talk to people. Uh, as Mike Amos will always tell you, and if you haven't seen his new latest video, Oh, my God. Oh, you, you know what? It's a minute and 12, a minute and 14, a minute and 18 of power. Um, I still believe that our 29-minute video, and I'm working with people, it's too long. We're all built for speed. What are we sending a 29-minute video out for? I'm trying to send you that video out, but I'm also trying to send a three- to four-minute video out. I want to be powerful, impact fast and quick. So as things change and they morph, and they will continue to morph, believe me, we're only going to get better. Um, I still look back at two and a half years and where we were, and when I first met in Alana in Huntington Beach, and I saw something very unique there, and I knew I didn't know how, how not we worked together, but I didn't care. I've stuck with this now for two and a half years, and finally, finally, and this is my five-year plan. I told these guys when I started, this is my five-year plan. Well, guess what? I'm halfway there, and I'm rebuilding something very special this time. I've learned lessons. We all will learn lessons through this process, good, bad, and ugly. Just will. I'm also blessed that I'm working on some major, major deals with, with my clients, major deals. And I'm learning through that also. I mean, I just continue to learn. And I, I don't know what else to tell anybody else out here is on this call, but if you don't want to learn, you won't grow. And anybody on this call is always welcome to call me and have a discussion with me. You know, sometimes I'm to the point, and I can be. I don't think I'm a pretty that rough of a person. I'm not, you know, except when certain people do certain things that, you know, are against my business ilk. I'm an easy guy, everybody. Do what you say and say what you do, and you'll do fine. And we all will do fine. You'll find out. As you talk to more and more people, 90% of the population, maybe 95%, don't do what they say and don't say what they do. They don't. If I didn't show up at this call at 8 o'clock this morning with Bill Reynolds, this is the second time, and I showed up on time, you know what he said to me? David, I love you being punctual. I love you being on time. You're one of the few that shows up on time. Well, that's how you differentiate yourself, everybody. You know, as a furniture rep at 22 years old, are you kidding me? If I didn't call back a customer, an owner of a furniture store, man, where would I be? Where would I be? So I'm trained. I mean, I'm so trained to call back and make calls back. Of course, that human being's changed now. They don't pick up the phone. <laughs> it's the truth. They text. They text more than they email. And, again, the three-by-three, three, I, I started using it now. I mean, I'm, I convinced I make calls. 
Nobody answers. I make the second and third call. People pick up. So it's a two to three call process. The other thing I will tell you what you should do, please, when you're working with salesjobs.com, make yourself a spreadsheet. Copy and paste email addresses, copy and paste name and phone number, and make yourself a spreadsheet, which will take time to build. But yesterday I sent 75 GMAS. It's not even a lot. I got two responses. Hey, I don't know who's going to be there and who's not. I have no idea who's going to be there or who's going to pick up the phone or not. No idea. I have no idea who's going to respond to me. I have no idea who's going to opt out to me. It doesn't matter to me because guess what? I found Mr. Bill Reynolds. Where it goes, I don't know. I'm also listening to Facebook marketing and insurance for marketing agents. I've got three people looking at us right now. Again, what does Mike Amos talk about? How many prongs are you using? You can't just rely on one. But even after you send emails and you text and you this and you do all our digital things, the human voice is still there. You've got to be able to engage with people. You've got to be able, and I'm learning. Oh, my God, how about this? In a sales presentation, do you know 7% should only be your words? You should ask pointed questions and shut up. My biggest downfall, not learning to shut up, listen. Listen more. Ask the right questions and then listen. And when you think they're done, still listen. Wait till they talk. Oh, Mr. Anonymous showed up. Welcome, Mr. Anonymous, to our company. Love that moment. Anyway, it's all good. Listen, whatever I told you today is still my part of my process of what I'm learning. I'm willing to learn if you're willing to learn. If you're willing to learn, you're going to be successful in this company. If you're not willing to pick up the phone, you won't be successful in this company. If you want more verbiage, write my number down, 949-466-3304. Promise you one thing. If I don't pick up, I'm on the other line, but I will call you back. I will call you back as far fast as I can. That's me. I'm OCD when it call, comes to calling people back. You know, I've got a business partner who's OCD about every little I and dot T crossed and everything else, which is great. So it makes us good business partners. I understand we're all here. Mike puts a lot of energy into this thing. I put a lot of energy into this thing. If all of us on this call, and I'm looking at 17 of us, that's it. If all of us on the call put the same energy Mike and I put into this thing, you know how much we can create here for all of us? All I want is the same energy. I look for the same energy when you came in here. Most, you came in here for a reason. Everybody on this call came in here because they saw something different. You saw it. Make it happen. You know, make it happen. Learn the circle. Learn what's going on. Learn, 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 and then make yourself. Yes, I follow the system. Yes, I use the script. But I've learned now over the years as I help build the script and tweak it, I can still be me. Learn that process. Learn being you. Learn the three by three. Learn the 48 to 72 hour rule because I will tell you, that's Mr. Delfino's, and it's right. I can't tell you how many, unless it's in a major emergency, I can't tell you he could put out, put me out for six, seven, Six days, seven days. Guess what? They never answer the phone. Listen, I had eight ABC calls, eight last Friday, eight scheduled. Are you kidding? How many people answer the phone? Zero. Till Saturday and Monday. I'm learning that too. People won't pick up the phone on Friday. They want to talk. Unless you find a real go-getter. Then you know. Then you're, that's the person you're really looking for. The person who picks up that phone on Friday and doesn't care that it's Friday afternoon, doesn't care it's the weekend. You know, weekends were made for whatever they are. You know, who cares? It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter what time of day, what time of the week, what time of the month. Somebody needs to talk to me. I'm up. You know, you wanted to make an appointment with me at 8 o'clock in the East Coast. That's 5 a.m. my time. Will I be there? Ask Mike, ask and Alana. Will I be there? Are you kidding? Without question. And if I'm not going to be there, I'm going to have the courtesy. I'm going to have the courtesy enough to text Call and say, hey, I can't make it. I'm sorry. Something came up. At least I'll give you that courtesy. So yep, you always why do. shouldn't I? So why shouldn't everybody give themselves each, each other, each of us the same courtesy? We are a team, everybody. We are a team that has a chance to do something 
so magnificent, so incredible, something I've never seen in my entire life, my entire life. I know where we're going, everybody. Is it easy? <clears throat> Believe me, you don't know what 110 phone calls a day is until you've made them. You don't know what people screaming at you and telling you're idiots on LinkedIn until you feel it. Do you know what? Good. Let them tell me that. Because the moment they tell me that, I go, thank you so much. You sound just like Blockbuster seven years ago with 4,400 stores. And that's what they said to Netflix. Mm -hmm. Aha uh -huh to you. Enjoy your life. Keep doing what you're doing. And I end the call, and I don't mean to be mean, but keep driving your horse and buggy to those clients. Enjoy yourself, because that's what you're doing. So everybody, listen, I hope it wasn't too long of a lecture. I'm not trying to make it a lecture. I'm trying to help all of you. Again, I'm going to give my phone number. I'm an open, honest guy, 949-466-3304. I continue to learn. If you want to learn more tidbits that I'm doing, I'm writing this whole 20-page script, trying to get it done by Friday so I can start videoing myself and, get, and have it critiqued by some of my accountability partners in the other place. And that's the other thing I'm going to lead to before I end. Those of you on this call aren't doing the accountability sheet, shame on you. Shame on you. It's your accountability, not to us, not to Mike and Alana, not to me. The accountability sheet is on you. Remember that. It's not about us. This whole thing is about you. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? I can tell you, I leave on this, I want to be selling when I'm 70 years old. I don't want to be Willie Loman. I don't want a giant book of business. I want to own this distribution in this, in this business. If you do, grab on, make good things happen, and we'll all do great things together. And Alana, Michael, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, David. And he's absolutely right. Make it happen. Grow, learn. Just keep, keep doing it. So let me bring up Mike. He's got a great presentation. I can't wait to see it. Thanks. All right, guys, it's already April. Uh, we're in well into 2019 right now. doesn't really matter if you've been in two days, two years. You want to look at this next 48, 60 months as the sweet spot for the business cycle, for the growth that's going to help build the largest organizations that will really take root and put you in a position where you can start to walk away from this. So we use the Statue of Liberty as our symbol for our team. Team prosperity, it represents freedom. There's always a price to pay for freedom. Um, it's in the daily activity, the grind of getting this up off the ground, gaining traction, getting some roots built across this country, and then letting the natural scalability of this business model and distribution system um, work for you. Like I just mentioned, doesn't matter if you've been here two years, two days. I want you guys to draw a line in the sand. I want you to look at the next 48 to 60 months as the sweet spot, not just coming up with this randomly to get you guys motivated. You look at the other disruptors, year five to nine, it's when they take a lot of market share from the traditional model, flows over to digital, and this size industry, that means a lot of money will be on the move. It's a five-year plan. Um, you might not get a lot of growth in the beginning. That's okay. We talk about examples, the African bamboo that stays underground for long periods of time, years, and when it finally does sprout, grows 90 feet in just a matter of a couple of weeks. So this is the business model um, that is going to take some effort on the front side, maybe not get the optimal results that you're looking for, but over time, if you let your efforts compound, it's going to grow into something serious that will be, um, you know, one of the industry giants. It's Financial Literacy Month, like Alana mentioned. Use this in your advertising. Guys, we, uh, we talk about framing your conversations, and when you look at our business model, and yes, for the entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial mindset, a person, the builder, whoever you want to call that person, great advantages. But why are we building this business? We're building the business because financial literacy in this country is very, very, very low and very, very, very poor. And when you get to influence large amounts of people with a digital model, with exponential reach, you allow yourself to go out there and do a lot of good. That individual, that family, that spreads out, it has a direct effect on them but also the community, the state, and eventually the nation, uh, nation as a whole, if we can help fix 
financial literacy in this country, my gosh, how much of a positive ripple effect will that have? There's tons of articles coming out right now about financial literacy. Use those in your advertising. Get people thinking. You are the professional. You are the one that's going to lead somebody in the right direction. Uh, people are looking for leadership, direction, guidance in this environment. We've got it. We give away our time for free. Uh, by doing that, it's going to lead to some uh, solid product sales on the back end. Also, guys, David mentioned this, never, ever stop learning. For 20, 40, 60, or 80, it doesn't matter. Learning, educating yourself is a lifelong experience, and if you quit sometime, then you're really cheating yourself. If you just spend a nominal amount of minutes per day um, over the next 48, 60 months as you're building your business, it's really going to turn into um, you know, a path or an avenue where you start to master some of this. You know, a lot of people come in, no social media sites, no experience in digital marketing, no experience in network marketing. Um, if you are willing to put yourself out there, learn, try, fail, go back to the drawing board until you get yourself uh, to a point where you've started to master what you're trying to learn, extract value, like we always talk about, this is not only about you. So that education that you're giving yourself, now you're going to be able to pass that down to generations that come underneath you, get them off the quicker starts, put money in their pocket quicker, uh, fuel organizational growth, which gets you to the point that you're looking for that exit strategy a lot sooner. Starts with you, not only your activity, but your commitment to educating yourself. Keep educating yourself. That's the key. And it doesn't matter what you want to learn, whether it's social media, recruiting, marketing, more about the industry, self-improvement, management skills, closing sales, more about virtual financial. At the Behind the keyboard or behind the smartphone, you can learn anything um, about, you know, anywhere in the world, any topic right there from where you sit. In this day, in this age, there's no reason why people should be ignorant about anything. You can learn whatever you want. Take advantage of the environment. Keep educating yourself and pass that down to your partners. It's really easy, guys. I learn most everything that I do nowadays on YouTube, whether it's for this business, whether it's personal. It doesn't really matter. I go to this. I call it the modern-day library. You learn, connect, and you do. Now, if you're just learning something for the sake of learning, it's self-improvement, that you just want to watch the video, great. If it's something that's more hands-on, tutorial, stop, do what you need to do, continue on watching it. If you watch something completely and you're supposed to take steps, it's a lot harder to get through the end and remember what you're supposed to do in the beginning or the middle. So pause, do what you need to, and come back and watch the rest of the video. Learning curve also comes from phone time. Not only in the follow-ups, but initial marketing, trying to build relationships. The more that you're on the phone, the more that you're talking about this business, the more that you're connecting with entrepreneurs or people that fit into a profile of what we're looking for, the easier it's going to have, uh, easier for you to have conversations going forward with uh, higher quality profile candidates. In the beginning, you kind of get your rocks out of your mouth, you know, stumble over yourself, and as you put in more phone time, the skill goes up with the skill, the confidence, and all of a sudden, you're starting to attract better talent because of the confidence you got, the verbiage you have, and the information you're able to relay in a clear, concise, articulate way. And like David uh, you know, mentioned earlier, you're gonna get a lot of what you need just by simply asking questions, being quiet, and listening. If you're the type of person that needs to overwhelm the conversation, you know, the other side's only going to take in a small percentage of that. You're going to show interest in the other side by asking questions, being quiet, and then letting them answer. And then you're going to write down what they're saying. That's going to give you all the points you need to take the conversation into whatever direction you feel is necessary. Uh, the basketball tournament, guys, ends this Monday, April 7th at midnight. So you've got, you know, a number of days to turn last points in. As of, I think, yesterday when I went through this, this is the leaderboard. Remember, Alana and I cannot win the tournament. So right now, Steven's got a four-point lead over Sherry and David. You know, it's, it's up in the air. Pour a lot of offense on late in the fourth quarter, and let's see what shakes out next Monday. $100 goes to the winner. Also, guys, David also mentioned this, the activity sheet. These are things that we do. I, you know, wake up early on Monday, process all this information, respond back to you guys. It's not something that I wake up and say, oh, my God, it's a great day to do the accountability sheet for all the people that have emailed it over, but I do it. It's part of my weekly routine. I offer feedback, and really it helps us tier 
our partners in terms of, you know, who's doing what. If you're on the weekly accountability meetings for the 12-week year, you're participating on these activity reports, uh, you deserve more of our time. And that's just the way it goes. As your organization gets bigger, this is how we filter out how we spend our time per day, who's doing what, what are they doing, and how can we help the people that are trying to make it happen. So the 12-week year, um, you know, some people have gone in for the first time last time. Some people have gone in multiple times. It's really about a time management system. It's really about allowing you to extract more value out of the day, place more value out of the day, and ultimately when you master the system, get more done in a quarter than people do an entire year. Uh, so real quick, I just wanted to run down, because we have actually 12 people uh, that finished this up. Uh, Sherry Munez finished 12-week year, uh, David Colwell, Alana Amos, Terry Turner, Dan Brinker, uh, Demetra James, Linda Mola, Tim Owonami, David Chase, Fritz Nigler, Michael Eisbrenner, and Wade Lasseter. Guys, to finish a 12-week process, to go through each week, keep up with your numbers, attend the weekly accountability meetings, it takes some time. It takes some concentration. It takes some effort. And it takes most of all the uncomfortable thing, accountability. Good weeks, bad weeks, these people showed up, reported, had insight, shared with the group. It's a great way to get to know your partners, get to know what other people are experiencing, good or bad. The more you can stay connected, yes, the virtual environment is great, our digital model is great, but you need to find ways to stay connected with people in your team, in your organization. It helps you and it helps them. So congratulations to these people. Great job, guys. Going into the next 12-week year, what you'll find is these people learn from this experience and they'll go into the next one even stronger, better, and their results will start to come, kind of rise to the top, and they'll start to separate themselves from the rest of the organization. Also, 12-week year, real quick, guys, if you are looking to join us, we would love to have you. If you're looking to join us and this will be your first time around, the only thing, and you'll hear me talk about this time and time again, the first 12-week year, just get through it. Good, bad, or ugly, power your way through the entire 12 weeks. Learn from people who've already been doing this for a while to set yourself up for the next one where you'll learn. Going into the first one, you're not going to get the most out of it. What you will get out of it is the satisfaction of completing it and learning from that process. If you are looking to get into 12-week year and you've never read the book, that's the first thing you need to do. If you're revisiting the 12-week year, revisit uh, reading the book again. If you want an audible version of that, I can get you a code, an invitation for a free book. If you've never had an audible account before, this will work. Let me know if you want that. Uh, we will be setting up the registration sign up on the Facebook page in the next you know, number of days for the new 12 week year. I also wanted to go over some stuff with you guys. When I was looking for some graphics to build that new systems video, the McDonald's Virtual Financial, you know, I just started getting some graphics and, and putting them together for our presentation today as well. If you were gonna open a franchise, remember a key of the franchise is that you don't have to lay it all out. It doesn't have to be your business model, it's a turnkey operation they set up for you. There's gonna be prices to pay for that, but if you were going to set up and open a franchise, look at all the stuff that you have to take into consideration going in, the 14 key steps in opening a franchise. There's a lot of time, energy, resources, money invested into this process. And when you look at some of the qualifications, you know, net worth, good credit score, previous success, liquid capital, passion, you know, drip, drive, the only thing that really stands out to me on this page that I require for you guys is passion, drive, and grit. If I had to come up with or if I needed you guys to come up and write a $100,000 check, we would lose a large majority of our team today. So you have huge advantages and set up a digital franchise, not only with the savings that you get to go back in your pocket, but with the low cost of entry, the low barrier of entry to get in. And when you look at some of these other things, and I'll try to keep you guys in the time period today that we promise every week, so let me get through this stuff. Um, when you look at this stuff, how you know, real is a franchise dream? Well, you can see the total cost over here um, the cheapest one was 7-Eleven right here. Um, you know, it's expensive to open. When you look at the franchise investment into something like a yogurt land or a TCBY, I mean, we just came out of a brutal winter. I don't know how much ice cream and yogurt was sold during those time periods, but it's expensive. What about well, when you see how much it is to really open one of these franchises versus the, um, you know, extra costs that come, come in? So you've got a wide variety of ranges here, 400 to 2 million, 300 to 3 million, 86 to 300. This is real money that has to be invested before you ever turn a penny of profit into these companies. And then, you know, I like seafood. I love seafood. I don't want to own a seafood restaurant, but if you do, it's going to cost you a pretty penny to open it. 
And then just going through Dunkin' Donuts, you know, do you have 680,000 to 1.3? Uh, you know, this was a, you know, some of the initial cost of opening a franchise, 190 to almost 500,000. Uh, we talked about McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, the price of these things. And, you know, all of this stuff, you know, McDonald's, Panera Bread, Applebee's, I mean, these are millions of dollars of investments right here that you would have to come in, put up, and then also share your profits with, you know, uh, the central company. When you look at the initial cost of a franchise, there's a lot of things to go in, inventory, equipment, insurance, training, rent, wages, signage. Some of this stuff can be controlled. Some of this stuff is going to be variable. And when you look at the ultimate, you know, franchise that we compare ourselves to a lot, system, McDonald's, you can see the breakdown here. After all of this, they're netting out total operating income, 153000 If new laws go into effect for minimum wage or some of this stuff goes up, obviously the profit shrinks. It's a lot of work for $154,000, guys. So when you look at our franchise opportunity, a digital franchise ownership opportunity that gives you four streams of income, personal agency expansion bonus income, and it gives you assembly line where you no longer have to do everything. You don't have to wear all the hats. You know, it's barely anything to come in, barely anything to upkeep it. Um, your costs are monetized in the system for headhunters, recruiters, appointment setters. This is an excellent opportunity, guys. If somebody has the vision, the motivation, the grit to get this done, I don't think there's a better franchise opportunity in America than this right here when you look at the numbers. It's a turnkey operation. It's a plug-and-play, predictable, profitable model from day one. And digital franchises save you a lot. I'm not going to go through this entire slide, but you can just – we always talk about, and Mike Hensvark is, you know, expert at the digital franchise savings that you have when you come in here. I mean, I'm not going to read through this. There's a whole bunch here. Also, compared to the other businesses, traditional versus a digital franchise like Virtual Financial, you know, how does it compare? Uh, you know, we rise to the top no matter what category or sector that you want to compare. Uh, we've got huge advantages here. And remember, we're also going to take you through the cash flow quadrant. If you're an employee, we're going to teach you how to become self-employed, run a base shop, and then take that base shop, create independent agency owners to become a business owner, which with no fixed and variable cost, basically, fuels a lot of investment. So we're going to take you through, but no matter if you're on day one or, or day 600 here, always be eyeing the distribution. Distribution is business ownership. That allows you an exit strategy. That's why we always talk to people in the open marketplace, whether it's in this industry or another industry, what's your exit point? What are you going to be doing seven to ten years from now? It's the same thing you're doing now, not on a very good path. And also, when we talk about things and some things that you guys will help, whether it will help you with your language, your verbiage, your confidence in talking to people, is understanding that people confuse self-employment with business ownership. A book of business or a practice, not the same as owning a business. Big difference there, guys. And also, when you're looking at this, you always want to be looking at two things. Number one, when you come in, how do I get to SVP as quickly as possible? Number two, how do I use that base shop and my leadership position as an SVP to get people trained to the point they leave my base shop, they go out and do this on their own, and yes, I have a business and probably a personal relationship with them, but they don't need me anymore. And just like every other franchise that we set up or that gets set up, it's going to take a piece of that business. So SVP is the first step. Developing SVPs is the second step. Um, if you are working towards attaining SVP, I'm – a big advocate of knowing exactly where you are at all times. You should have a ledger that shows your 90 rolling day premium, where you are with your partners. And then more importantly, besides knowing your numbers, know your partners, who's working, who's not. Dedicate your time, energy, and resources to the people who are actually working this business. The other people get put on the sideline. If they want to come back in, we welcome them, but it's not our job to push people through, drag people through this. Um, they've got to want it. You cannot, as a manager, as a leader, as a builder, want this more than somebody else wants it. That's going to be a problematic personality defect um, that you have to overcome. And Alana and I went through this in the very beginning. We, oh, man, if I can get this person, it's going to be a huge change in their life. But guess what? That person didn't want it enough. They didn't want it more for themselves, and I wanted it for them. That's one of the profile areas that you have to get good at as a manager. Um, platform advantages. If you're looking at a franchise opportunity and you're looking at the infrastructure, well, our platform absorbs our growth. It's got everything covered for you. Yes, we have a plug-and-play model on the digital side. You also have an enormous platform that absorbs the growth in a very orderly way and allows you going forward to throw exponential growth here 
Um, I don't know in too many other systems that are preparing to pay $4 billion in commission over the next few years. Also, when you're looking at, you know, what you want to do, business, franchise, whatever it is, you got the business plan. Does it work? Uh, define the problem. We talk about our problem is twofold, financial literacy on the client side and entrepreneurial opportunity on the partner side. Does our business plan work for both of those sides of the fence? Yes, it definitely does. So when you look at that, well, now how do I compare my business model against others? Well, a business can be revolutionary or a business can be like everything else. Revolutionary means that you innovate and you stand alone. Like everything else means you have to compete. I don't know if you guys seen the size of the industry, the number of people in this industry, the number of veterans that are still in this industry. I don't want to compete here. I want a revolutionary model that stands alone that allows me to go out and have conversations that attracts talent to build my community uh, disrupt the way these agencies are built, operated, and managed, and there's a lot of market share and money on the move when you look at that uh, kind of change or disruption in that size of an industry. Does the innovation work? Will the marketplace accept it? And guess what? We've already proved that over the last few years. You don't have to prove that. You just have to know, yes, the innovation works on a big level. The marketplace is accepting it and will accept it in a big way going forward. The way that you get richly rewarded is being able to step out of the herd mentality, develop things, develop roots in this organization, this business, this industry, before the rest of everybody else that we call the herd catches up and realizes, hey, this is a model that can work for me, my family, my desires, my goals. By the time they realize it, you've already got an organization built that will absorb them as they come in. All we're doing, guys, is taking a stale, stagnant, uh, boring industry, in my opinion, bringing a digital blueprint and overhaul to it that leads back to virtual financial. We're changing the way that the distribution of these financial services, um, you know, with this infrastructure, with this business model, and that leads back to one answer, virtual financial. Remember, your tier one, that's all we ask you guys to do in the beginning is make sure that you understand the tier one is the front door of your business. So A, I see a lot of you guys, your biggest problem is you don't let other people know you're in business. Um, you got no signage on your door, all the lights were turned out. Who's going to come in your place, uh, traditional business? Same thing here. You've got to let people know you're in business, and then you're going to let people also, through the process of our filters on the client, the partner side, let in people that you want, keep out people that you don't want. This is your business. But first and foremost, people got to know you're in business. You've got to advertise. You've got to market. You've got to be aggressive in this uh, industry. And that really all starts with understanding how to market. The website, your main forward slash biz is your main site. That's what should be center place of all the rest of your marketing. Landing pages, text campaigns, email marketing campaigns, they always center around your biz. So if you don't know your main site, don't know how to use it, don't know what's in it, get comfortable with it and start deploying that because somebody can end up here and instead of giving limited uh, information off a landing page after they've already entered their information in, now they can get here, they can find a whole lot of information about you, the business, and everything that we stand for. Your CRM. CRM is going to um, control distribution, control teams, control client growth. If you don't understand and master the CRM, not only are you going to have problems, but your organization, as far as the growth that you think you're expecting, is going to have major problems. This allows you not to have to be on the phone all day, not to have to track people down, not to wonder who's doing work, who's not. It's all right here for you. Enterprise level CRM, brains of your operation, learn it and hold people accountable as they come in to learn the CRM. Somebody doesn't learn the CRM, their chances of success here are near zero. And it doesn't matter what we do, it all feeds the CRM. The CRM is hungry. It's hungry every day. It wants to be fed, no matter if you're doing email, text campaigns, social media, calls, ads, everything ends up in the CRM and it's through our process of communicating, following up, and the things that we do to resolve the lead, you're going to end up with three of one, one of three outcomes, potential partner that goes to an interview, potential client, or neither. That's our business model. We feed the CRM, and the CRM has a set of filters through what we do and how we do it to get one of those three outcomes. Without marketing, nothing feeds the CRM. If nothing's going to the CRM, nothing comes outside. That would be like us having a factory bringing in no raw material and expecting at the end of the conveyor belt product to be coming out. It's not how it works. CRM's hungry every day. Feed it. Also, the CRM, like we just talked about, is going to control your team communication. This is going to allow you to control massive 
uh, nationwide widespread distribution of financial services and partners as well. Learn it, master it, expect others to do the same. Uh, work all aspects of the CRM, depending on where you are in the business. You've got marketing roles, you might have management roles, you might have consulting roles. No matter what you do, one or all three of those, you need to make sure that you keep track of your CRM every single day. Your assigned tasks, um, your own tasks, your follow-ups, the stuff that's behind schedule, the stuff that's on your calendar, everything needs to be done. CRM should be kept sleek and slim. Don't overwhelm it. Uh, with old data. There's something that's not worth it. Don't just keep it in there for the sake of having a prospect. You become like a data hoarder, and then all of a sudden what happens is you go in, and you're overwhelmed by there's so much stuff in there, you just shut down. I'll deal with it tomorrow. All of a sudden, I'll deal with it next week. All of a sudden, I'm not going to deal with it all. I quit. Also, good management. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but you guys can read through it. Good management is essential, especially in the first 30, 60, 90-day process. You need to set forth expectations of what you're going to do for them, what they need to do. And also, if stuff's not getting done correctly, help them alleviate the problems. You know, good or bad habits are going to be formed in the first you know, number of months here. People will follow your lead or your lack of lead. If I go into a CRM thinking about somebody, it's not my direct partner, and I'm checking in with them to see if this has been done or this has been done, and there's been no notes coming from you as a direct partner in two or three weeks, a bad sign, guys. Also, it's very important. Don't let people drop out just because of the test. The test is very boring material. It's very dry material. Not that hard of an exam to get done. It's one and done. Keep track of your testers, encourage them, let them know it's one and done. We get onto the more fun stuff, building, making money. You never want somebody's um, obstacle to multi-million dollar dis uh, distribution to be this exam. Also, the team tracker. If you're building a team, you need to know who you have on the team and where they are. And you need the bird's eye view of exactly where everybody is at any moment. Team tracker can do that. Got copies of the team tracker. There's a video on the YouTube channel that shows you how to use it very easy when you pull up the team tracker to know where everybody is. Without a team tracker, then you're relying on, you know, your mental thought process, going to CRM and looking for people. This is a blueprint for building your organization from the management side. Where is Where are my people? What do I need to do? What do they need to do? How do we get to the end result we're looking for? Uh, great companies, guys, they uh, grow, and they grow by hiring, investing, and advertising. So we grow like any other company that's trying to grow in America. Uh, the difference is we are looking to hire people that are willing to tie their income 100% to the revenue growth of our company. They understand that is a, it's a phenomenal opportunity. They don't understand it. They're not the right person. So, you know, learn how to frame your conversations. Why are we hiring? Why are we growing? Why are we advertising? Because financial literacy is poor. Uh, there's not much opportunity right now in America on the business side for people unless they have deep pockets. And, you know, our products, our strategies, our vehicles are things that people need to implement in their own financial plans to help them for the possible best or worst times to come. Uh, we talk about this pyramid for increasing your pipeline. If you reverse engineer all this back and if you can get good at, you know, mastering this process, you're going to have a pipeline that starts to fill up. People are going to be attracted to people that can master this and they feel that can lead them to where they want to go. So building rapport establishing the trust and credibility, getting the information that you need, asking questions, being quiet. What that's going to uncover is problems or goals they either want to get to or want to avoid. That lets you step in with a solution. Sometimes that solution is on the client or the partner side, a.k.a. virtual financial, and that leads to an action step. You don't have these things in place. You can't just jump to an action step. It's not going to work. This will help you guys greatly if you learn how to master this. And in the process of evaluating potential partners, they really want to know three things. Now, it comes from a wide variety of different types of questions, but is this real? How can I do this? And who's going to help me? That's what they're wondering from their side. From our side, what we're wondering is, what have you been doing with yourself professionally? What do you understand about what we're doing in this present day with this industry and this model? And what's your motivation? You know, what would be the reason you want to come in and get this done? Also, as a side note, what type of money are they making now? What type of level and in, annual income are they looking to make now? That one question is going to allow you to see, is this person a big dreamer or is this person looking for part-time income? And it allows you to put them in the appropriate places with the appropriate help to get them to where they want to go. This model is good. You want to make an extra three grand a month? We got an opportunity for you. 
You want to make 100 grand plus a month? We got an opportunity for you. Also, contacts and conversations. You want to know how to grow your business? Get on the phone. Start advertising. Start opening conversations. Contacts, that tier one contact, like we always talk about, is bricks. Those bricks are going to build your building. Inside that building, you're going to house partners and clients. But it all starts with showing up and stacking those bricks. No bricks, no building, nowhere to house the people. Uh, grow your brand. We always talk about this. Yes, virtual financial is a brand, but so are you. You're in a more important brand. Who are you? What do you like to do? How do you spend your time? Where do you go? Who do you spend your time with? Share some of your life. We always talk about the different social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram is a great place to show you know, your potential audience, partners, clients, whoever might end up on your social platforms, a little bit more about who you are. People want to do business with people they like. So, yes, you're going to put out business material. You're also going to put out personal material to attract like-minded people. You want to work with people that not only want to work with you, but you want to work with them, that you like them. You can't stand to be around somebody. It doesn't matter how talented they are. They're not going to make a good partner for you. Why have a social media pl- uh, strategy? Helps your marketing efforts. Helps build brand awareness. One of the most powerful drivers for word of mouth, and you can use social media to attract buyers. With these platforms are immense. You can build them can engage with your audience. They're unbelievable, but you have to do two things. You have to have activity. You have to learn more about the platform. If you're still using LinkedIn four or five months later, the exact same way that you were using it on day one, probably a problem. So what you want to do in LinkedIn is use it for not only marketing, but also for networking as well. And that's the one-two combination punch for LinkedIn, marketing and networking. And you want to use LinkedIn groups. If you have a very small audience, when you come in, one of the greatest ways to get access to large groups of people is join groups. Join groups of people that fit into your partner persona, entrepreneurs, marketers, agents, whoever that might be, to start to interact with them. Also, know the difference between a post and an article. Articles create group influence as well as a shortcut to blanket your audience. And really, uh, much of what you want to do on a daily basis is going to start from two areas, and we always talk about this, the navigation bar to keep track of activity, what you need to do, notifications, and the search. Search sets up a lot of what you want to do in building, engaging, and finding things to either talk about or people to connect with. And that's exactly what I wanted to show you guys today is um, a new, we kind of introduce things on LinkedIn step by step. We're going to start at the search bar. We always start here, whether we're adding connections, targeting first connections, looking for groups, we start at the search bar. Now what I wanted to show you today is when you pull up people, jobs, content, and more that has the groups, I want to introduce the content. I posted something by Gary B. in the Team Prosperity Group a couple days ago. It talks about this is the golden age of LinkedIn. If you're not using it correctly, you're really screwing yourself and your business. So that content's going to allow you to find things that are about whatever you want to, you know, find. digital marketing, network marketing, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, whatever it is that you want to find, and that content will pull up. It's easy to comment, engage, share, like, whatever you want to do so you can start attracting through content posts either on your own or stuff that you interact with through the search bar, finding those like-minded people. The better that you get at segmenting what you're doing on this platform, who you're looking for, the message that you're trying to get over to those people, the easier it is you're going to find to get the partners that you're looking for. And then that content down there, you can just, you know, post it by, date post it, Arthur Industries. There's a lot of different ways. So find the content along with the people every day on LinkedIn. And one of the tips that we gave you guys a number of weeks ago is if you're looking to build your Facebook business page, the number of likes on there, start with posting something in your Facebook business page first, and then use that post to go into groups and say, you know, when you share, share to a group. If it's relevant to that group, go ahead and post it because what's going to happen is, It's going to appear just like pretty much it does on your business page, and somebody in that group can like your page just from that um, post. So that's a great way to build your audience on the business page through Facebook groups by initially getting that post done through your Facebook business page. Um, It's really about opportunity this year, 2020, 2021, 2022. This is the sweet spot for the business cycle. We're not just coming up with random things, like I said, to get you guys motivated. This has been proven with the other disruptors. Challenge yourself. Time to do something special. If you get serious about your money, or if you don't get serious about your money, you'll never have serious money. So that's the same thing about your business, about your clientele, whatever you're doing in life. If you're treating it as a hobby, coming at it, you know, lackadaisical, 
just drifting, you're never going to get serious results out of that. So whatever you're doing, personal or business, get serious about what you're doing, and you'll find that you have serious results coming. And remember, guys, we always talk about the fact that this is not going to happen overnight for you. So what you want to do is stay dedicated and remember, good days, bad days, great days, really bad days, it really doesn't matter. If you stick to this, have a daily rhythm of activity, and realize that over time periods, whatever that is, X, weeks, months, years, whatever it might be, you do what you need to do. It's a proven system, um, proven model, very large industry. It's time to really you know, get to the point where you go at this with everything you got. And everything you got doesn't mean full time. If it means part time, you're spending 10 to 15 hours, get the most out of those hours because what's going to happen is you can make more than full time income with part time hours here. So I know kind of breeze through that kind of quickly, guys. We've got three minutes left before end of the meeting. Uh, if you guys have anything you want to talk about publicly, great questions, concerns, clarification, or if you need to talk, uh, talk privately, we're always available. Uh, text, email, we'll set up a conversation, screen share, whatever it is you guys need. Thanks. All right, another great presentation by Michael Amos. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the recording and